beneficiary is the le the personal property trust, then it is who would answer that question. So wait, it's not Roberto yet. Wait, I know he's in here somewhere. No, he's just a manager. And he's a poorly paid manager, too. They, in fact, the trust owes him a lot of money. Accrued payments, 10%, plus all the people Roberto put in, all that's been accruing all this time. In fact, he's got a first priority lien against the property, against the trust, for all that work he's been doing for the trust that they haven't paid him for yet. Just a thought. <laughs> all right, so the... Uh, the percentage of the beneficial shares go to whomever you choose. It could be yourself as the 100% primary beneficiary. If you're going to use the successor beneficiaries of trust, then what goes here? The name, the name of the trust. The name of the what? Sorry. Personal property trust and the name of the trustee of the personal property trust. That's what would go on this line. It should not be the same trustee as Correct. It, the very, very good point. It should not be the trustee that's the same trustee as the first trust. Got that? So we're going to use a different name so that if anybody ever were to get through the primary trust, the land trust, there's going to be another trust behind that with a different name with, in, in law they consider an adversarial interest. So in that adversarial interest, then they say, okay, that's a, that's a different party than this party is. Okay? So the successor beneficiary or beneficiaries. Now that means that once you get past the primary beneficiary, there's successors. If the trust is your primary beneficiary, then you don't have to worry about that. But if you are the primary beneficiary, then we need to go ahead and list our successors. And that means... Uh, your your daughter, your son, your daughter-in-law, your wife, your this, that, and the other. However you want that asset to roll is exactly what you list. And you list it in order. So whatever, whenever something happens to me, I want it to go to you. And if, anything, if you're not there, I want it to go to you. And if you're not there, I want it to go to you. You see how this works? You have to create a cascade inside the trust explaining exactly what your intentions are. The more specific you are, the less likely there is to be confusion about that. Can you guys cut your phones off, please? Okay? All right. And so. The trust has to be uh, recorded at, at the government office, right? No, the trust will not be recorded anywhere. The only thing that will be recorded is the deed. The transfer of the asset from one party to the other is a deed. That's the only thing we're going to report along with the affidavit of trust and the certificate of trust. That's the only thing we're going to record at the courthouse. All of the rest of these documents revealing who the beneficiaries are and all that good stuff, that's private. Nobody sees that. Exactly. That's what the whole keys to the kingdom is, is the privacy aspect of no one knowing who the beneficiary is. It's a secret. And it is. It's a contract between the trustee and the beneficiary. That is a secret document. Nobody should be given any further information outside of the realm of those two people, the trustee and the beneficiary. That's it. Now, if you have successor beneficiaries, let's say it's your children, and you don't want them to know their successor beneficiaries, you don't have to tell them. They don't have to know. Nobody has to know who they're, that they're a successor beneficiary in the trust. In fact, keep them guessing. <laughs> keep, keep them guessing. Well, here's what you can do. You say, look, look, we got the slobber program. <laughs> if, I, if I'm in the nursing home and slobber's pouring out of my mouth, I want somebody wiping that up. <laughs> oh, that's okay, Daddy. That's okay, Daddy. Oh, that's all right, Daddy. We love you so much. I want to kiss right here. I want to kiss right here. Because <laughs> the, beauty, the beauty is 
that you can change the beneficial interest anytime you want to. That fast, the beneficiary can change. Just keep that in mind, children. <laughs> The deed. Yeah, if then they all have the same address and the same telephone number? No, no, no. no they're going to have the manager's address. The manager, see, you, you manage trust properties. You manage lots of trust properties. So, uh, as a manager, you receive various mailings from the various people that you manage for. What about and they the have personal, to be trusts. What about the personal trust? Personal property trust does not get recorded anywhere. That's a private document. And the name of who the beneficiary is inside the personal property trust is a private matter. Okay? So now we've got our primary trustee, our primary, our primary beneficiary. We've got our successor beneficiary set up. And be sure to clearly define who gets what at the beneficiary's death. Who gets what at the beneficiary's death. Okay. Now, I've got to let you guys in on a little secret. I've, I've got about uh, 12 more minutes. So if you need to get your trust, go ahead and get it now because they're going to be packing up and I'm going to be darting out of here in a minute. All right? So go ahead and get your trust now if you haven't already gotten your trust. Thank you. This this stuff you already got, <laughs> but, but there's others that are still saying. <laughs> okay, so like Rudy, welcome aboard, Rudy. Thank you. Yeah, baby, brilliant man there. All right. So the uh, have I clearly defined who gets the percentage of the death of the six. Sub subsequent beneficiary. So again, the subsequent or successor beneficiary, if anything happens to them, who gets it after that? If you didn't say so, there has to be probate. If you do say so, and you don't have anybody else really that you'd want to give it to, then give it to the Humane Society. Give it to the Salvation Army. If you don't name who would be the ultimate person to receive it, then the government gets it. The state of California gets it. It's called SG. They SG you out of your property. <laughs> it's actually a legal term. Can you believe that? SG. They S they even named it as cheese. Maybe that's where that word came from. <laughs> but they cheat you out of your property. So uh, this is an opportunity for you to go ahead and just name whomever uh, if, if all of your heirs, God forbid, everybody was on the bus at the same time, and and something happened, you still have something to receive it. Yes. It sounds like a will. You're absolutely right. It sounds like a will that's already been probated. Because that's exactly what a trust does. It names who the beneficiary is, so therefore, we don't need no court, thank you very much. We've already named it inside the trust, and it's all signed by the people who own this stuff anyway, so it solves the problem. Beautiful? Beautiful. All right. Um, trust director. Director of the trust is an optional role. The trust director, let's say that you have a highly liable property such as a gasoline station or a daycare center, something like that, you may want to have another layer between you, the beneficiary, and the trustee. So you can create another layer in there called a director. You talk to the director, the director talks to the trustee, the trustee doesn't even know where the directions are coming from. Is that a good thing? Absolutely. So you've got that built into the system as an opportunity and it is built into the trust as well. But you simply don't fill out that block in the trust if you're not going to have a director. Just, just skip it. You can always add a director later. And then, of course, the director's true address and telephone number. 
To accept title, the trustee shall be paid. We typically put $100 and then shall be paid annually $100. Now, you could forget to pay. Or you could choose a trustee. You be trustee for them, they be trustee for you. Now you owe them $100, they owe you $100. And you don't even have to write a check. Is that a beautiful thing? Yeah. So uh, getting to know some of your other trust owners might be a good idea. And then you can help each other out. I didn't say you should do that. You might, mind you. I said you might want to. That's completely up to you. All right, so the trust address shall be, and that will be your management company address, which is not your home address. How many of you have tenants that are mailing checks to your home? Yeah, exactly. So now you need to obtain an office. It's at the UPS store. It's about this big and that long. <laughs> has really tiny furniture in it. <laughs> and, and, and so that address now becomes the focal point of all the mailings. And that's the property taxes, that's the insurance, that's the subject to deals where you're going to be taking over other people's financing. We need to tell the lender to mail it to that address. And from now on, nothing is going to come to your own personal home. This is, remember, there's three P's here. Privacy, protection, and probate avoidance. So to get the privacy and the protection, you're going to have to have a separate mailing address. Okay, now we get down to the successor trustee. Now again, this is that person that if the next door neighbor, so to speak, the person that could stand in for our primary trustee. So our primary trustee, let's say we couldn't find them. Maybe they're in Europe. We're trying to sell a property and they're in Europe for a month. Good grief. I want to close tomorrow. Can't find the trustee. No problem. We simply terminate the primary trustee and the successor trustee that we already named in our documents is right there. Got that? with a form. There's a form in here for that. Okay, So there's a termination of trustee and a resignation of trustee form in here. There's also an extension of trust form in here. There's a lot of good stuff. Insurance and the land trust is in here. Financing and the land trust. We didn't get time to get into that today. But put them loans money to trusts. Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, FHA, VA, all loan money to trusts. The clerk does not know that. The guidelines know that. So you have to have them look it up. When they look it up, voila, there's the evidence that they actually will lend to trust and they can flip their loans because that's all they're in business to do is flip loans to somebody else. And Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac being two of them, they, when they flip those loans, they have to follow certain guidelines to make them flippable. <laughs> so in making them flippable, they have to follow those guidelines, and yes, trusts will work. Welcome aboard. Thank you. It, what's your name? Two. Two. Nice and nice to meet you, too. Welcome aboard. Thank you. When you named John Smith as trustee, that why you couldn't have um, a, an auto, a, a resignation letter at that, uh, on file uh, immediately should you decide you want to use it? You might choose to do that. You might choose to do that. That's a strategy. No, no. You will merely, if you had to show the title company anything, you could show them that. In many cases, you wouldn't even have to show them anything. And you would just merely say to the title company, the successor trustee will be closing this transaction. And what I'm about to show you is a form that shows on public record who the trustee is, who the successor trustee is. So that will be on public record. The name of the trust, the name of our primary trustee, and the name of our successor trustee will all be on public record. It's buried in the documents. So it's not like in the, what would you call the 
uh, categorization. Like if anybody looked up their name, they wouldn't find them. If anybody looked up the trust, they'd have to look three pages over to see who the successor is. Okay, so it's kind of it's the secrets are hidden out in the open, <laughs> and nobody reads. So <laughs> it's a it's a good thing that you can just kick in any time. And when you kick it in, merely by saying to the uh, closing agent who is going to close this transaction, then whatever they ask for at that time, you can give it to them. Hold your, hold your questions, please. Let me get on through here. All right. So the land trust asset shall be, and that's where you name the address of the property that you're putting into the, asset, into the trust and the county in which it's located. And then the seller grantor is, and then you name the seller grantor. Uh, that means you, if it's in your name. That would be the LLC if it's in the LLC's name, or the uh, living trust, or whatever name you may have it in now becomes the grantor of the property. The trust becomes the grantee of the property. So you or the or whatever entity you have, grantor. The new trust, land trust, is going to be the grantee. The asset location and address, let's see, I covered that. Are there any loans <laughs> or liens you are taking title subject to? How many of you have a house that has a loan on it? 